and welcome to another video. I have to explain that I've actually done a few things behind your back for my regular YouTube subscribers and, and such um, in that the compensator, the Screaming Eagle compensator that I put on here involved a rotor stator rotor that I glued the magnets into and I had videos up of that process which I've since removed because I discovered that the stator rotor with the glued in magnets was uh, a bit out of balance just enough so that at certain RPMs the vibrations through the frame and such of the bike were pretty prominent so I didn't dare to leave it like that. I thought it would rip the uh, crankcase bearings apart. And who knows what other damage would be done. So I didn't risk it. I took it out. And I did some work on the factory compensator that was in this 2009 Road King with the 96 cubic inch motor. Uh, as you may have heard, the compensators from 2007 through 2011 had problems. Uh, with uh, rattling, wearing out, so to speak. And from what I've found so far, it's mostly due to the spring pack that's wearing out inside the compensator that's pushing against the, the sprocket. So, I did a little, uh, well, I made some changes. And I added one of the thin concave spring washers to this pack of spring washers and I'll, I'll show you that once we get it apart. I had to do some uh, welding, a little bit of tack welding uh, in four different places around the perimeter to keep it from sliding off to one side and stay relative to the other factory spring washers. So anyway, I didn't videotape that process because I thought, well, there's not much hope of this being successful and that it would be a huge failure and so I didn't bother videotaping any of that. And as it turns out, I was a little bit wrong because starting the bike up now, it's almost as quiet as it was when it was new. It took a lot of the rattle away and the starting problems, even when hot away, adding that one extra washer. So I went online and I ordered a used compensator set. I only wanted the springs. Uh, in fact, I only wanted one spring out of that set. So that showed up in the mail and I'm taking it apart so I can take out the homemade concave uh, spring steel washer that I put in there, the thin one that came out of the Scream and Eagle kit, and I'm going to replace it with one of the thicker ones that are made to go in this older style compensator to see if I can uh, permanently keep it from rattling and, and jostling around. So I'll spare you a lot of taking it apart, but uh, as you can see, the primary fluid is being drained right now. I'm doing that while it's on the jiffy stand because with it leaned over to the side like this, a lot of the fluid travels to this edge and comes down and, and comes out the uh, drain hole like it should. So I'm going to go ahead and zip all the rest of these bolts out real quick. Also remove, I, I didn't even put the passenger floorboard back on because I wanted to try the bike out first before I went too far in putting it back together. That, that only saved me just you know one step but still. Uh, so I'll get all this stuff out of the way and show you what I did. Okay, I've got the outer sprocket off and that reveals the springs inside. And I don't know if you can see it really well in the video. Let me zoom in. So inside here, if you can see, there's an extra spring washer. I actually uh, and I had to put some little spot welds on it to hold it in place inside the opening of the original uh, steel uh, spring washers and so I put this in here with it cupped to the outside against this spring pack and uh, even though I didn't videotape the process because I didn't think it would be successful I didn't think it re really would make a difference and that's why I ordered the uh, kit that I did the extra complete compensator so I could get another original ring and I can see that this one's pretty shiny out here where it was contacting the back of the uh, the ramp sprocket um, so I'm going to rebend 
I think it was this tab right here. I can see little teeth marks on it. Uh, maybe I'll pick a different one this time, but I'll rebend one of these tabs and take this spring pack out and add one of the springs that came with. You can hear the box. I've got to take a spring pack out of out of this compensator. You can see inside here. It's got the four spring washers, and they're a little loose. But that's how they come from the factory. Is with four of them. I'm going to add one of these to this to make five. That's my goal, and we'll see what happens. Can't get a lot because of the primary case, but. There we go, that was enough. So I'll take out the original four that were in here. Okay. And then here's the fifth one. It's kind of like the fifth beetle. And I see a little piece of my spot weld broke off. Here it is right here. Okay. I thought it would hold, but it didn't. But it did keep it from sliding in underneath these others so that's what I had done is spot welded just to keep this one centered within the original one but now that I have a spare right here so I'm going to add this one to the pack maybe I'll have two of them together in the back I'll put these and these are both the same the same way they're not they're not against each other to make a spring. They're flat against each other. Okay? Going in the same, the same curve. Okay, so we'll put those in first, followed by one that's facing into the motor. Okay? Now this one is facing out, so it's curved outwards. Line it up just right. There we go. And one more. The one that was on the outside that's shiny from where it contacts the sprocket pushing device. Uh, put that one in last. There we go. So now I've got five in there instead of four. The back two are both curved this way, facing out. So here is the factory Belleville washers uh, configuration. Uh, for the 2006, well, really 2007 through 2011 touring models and the Dynas. There are four of these Belleville washers. Two of them face each other. And then you'd have the, the motor crankshaft coming through uh, from this end and your sprocket on this end and what this would do with the ramps inside here is cushion the pistons by squeezing these together so this whole system can go side to side so we had four four springs all together so here's my idea And that is putting two of those Belleville washers at the back together, first of all, okay? And then putting in the factory original configuration like that. So we've got the factory four plus this fifth one in the back. So there's really two back here pushing outwards. Here's the uh, crankshaft and it comes through to the chain sprocket and so that will give it uh, a, a bit more sturdiness because these two pushing together against these three are going to make it a bit stronger. So now that I've got my five steel spring rings in there. I'm going to come back in here with the vice grips and slightly bend that tab back up and get on it from this angle a little better. A little more. There we go. 
and there that'll keep the springs from coming out too far although once this is bolted together these will be compressed slightly and remain that way all the time okay I'm gonna put some lube on these uh, compensator parts before I put them together get some lube all over them put some lube right down inside the spring packs here get that down in there just get it on my fingers and scrape it off just like that let it run down inside that now if I remember right getting this back together lining up the sprockets with each other and keeping them that way there we go okay so this is it with it fully assembled again and again I got everything pretty much lubed up by the looks but the trick is to keep the chain on the outside here and line it up with the crankshaft there's not a lot of wiggle room here and there it goes what can happen is the ramp piece can come off this inside spline piece and let me get another run out of here see it can come apart like that and then you got to start over and line everything up as you can see this is a messy job all right so I've got it back together now the trick is to get the chain on the sprocket and get it lined up with the crankshaft without losing the two of those inner pieces they need to stay somewhat together with each other see I'm separating them just a little bit and it's lining up with the crankshaft you gotta watch the chain down here on the bottom it fetches up on the inner primary where the bolts go okay we're making progress here there we go it slid back together and as you, you can see here's a demonstration of the, how it would push against that spring pack instead of being able to slide out like it is now it would be pushing in on the spring pack with the motor pulses to like be a, a shock absorber for the pistons okay we got it that far Harley Davidson recommends the red Loctite now, so we're going to put the red Loctite to it, and we'll send it in there, and send it home. Okay, it's starting to starting to tighten up right there, and already I've got a tight sprocket pushing against that spring pack so what I want to see is how well this will tighten up now against that spring pack uh, to determine is it too much is that too much pressure against the spring pack that's what I want to find out okay it is back torqued to 150 foot-pounds ready to put the primary chain tensioner back in I'm using a Hayden unit and put the cover back on and all that fun stuff I'm ready to put the primary chain tensioner back in but first I just want to point out that before I could turn this sprocket with my fingers but with the addition of the fifth spring washer Belleville washer in the back here inside the pack with that fifth one there's enough tension now that I can't turn the sprocket either direction just by hand so I think that's a good sign that I've got plenty of spring force pushing out on against these uh, dogs so to speak the ramps inside instead of putting the automatic chain tensioner in that uh, came stock I bought this Hayden tensioner uh, last year for a little over a hundred dollars and it's got about 5,000 miles on it this is how much it's worn in that 5,000 miles which is just kind of a break-in I noticed the noise quieted down noticeably after uh, the first four or five hundred miles and by a thousand miles it didn't sound any any different than the factory shoe and underneath I've got the two springs there's a recess in there for the springs to go into line it up so this rounded side 
lines up with the rounded end of the tensioner plate. It's got these really rugged side posts, solid steel. If the shoe underneath the chain here, lift up on it, I guess is the easiest way. And keep moving it around. There we go. Make sure everything is right where it's supposed to be. I have found it easier to put this rear bolt in first, line it up with the hole. You can kind of see where it goes in there. And then just thread it all the way in until the shoulders of the bolt snug up to the plate. Just like that. Then for the front bolt, get your screwdriver or a suitable prying up device. Don't pry down because you're prying down against the edge of this aluminum and you could put a pucker into it and create a leak on your gasket, something like that. So instead, pry up. Put your screwdriver in or whatever. Lift up and try to get this bolt lined up with its hole as best you can. You can feel when it's threading in easier as you wiggle the plate around a little bit by lifting up on it. Okay, that started in there. There's 17 for that one. There's 17 for that one. From the top of the mounting plate to the bottom of the shoe, which uh, is measured in here, got three eighths of an inch there, just an eighth of an inch over a quarter of an inch, all right? So we've got three eighths. And that's what the Hayden primary chain tensioner instructions say to go for is a three eighths gap. So we've got that. And with the shoe set at three eighths of an inch, we've got this much play in the chain. As you can see, the shoe moves against those springs and it won't quite touch the top of the chain case before the shoe bottoms out. It bottoms out before the chain can touch. So we've got the proper amount of tension, proper amount of play in it, three eighths of an inch gap. Everything should be honky dory. And I'm really hoping that this is the last time that the compensator is opened up this year. Yep, I've got the primary open again. And to be honest, people, this is the second time today that I've had the primary open, uh, experimenting with not only the primary chain tensioner, trying the uh, original factory unit with a little tweak that I made that didn't help it any, to putting the Hayden tensioner back in. And now I've got it apart again because uh, it almost felt like a solid compensator. So with this one back here, it uh, this fifth one, it may have, may have put uh, just a little bit too much pressure against these other three. And, and they just squished up together and, and couldn't really absorb the shock as well. So I came up with idea number two. What I did is I added another of the Belleville washers to the front. So I left these four alone. I took that fifth one of my earlier idea and instead put it facing out in the cup that's inside the stator rotor. So I think adding this extra washer to the front against the other four inside the stator rotor cup, uh, it, it acts like a shim. So it's an eighth of an inch thick and it's, it's pushing an eighth of an inch more against these other four springs. So I'm gonna put the original four back in facing each other. See how they make kind of a couple of springs. You can kind of imagine that squeezing uh, back and forth with the compensator cushioning the impact of the, uh, the pulses of the motor. So I'm going to put those back in, in their original configuration. And I'm still going to use this one, but I'm not gonna put it in facing. I'm gonna put it in facing outwards, just like this. So it's facing out, I'm going to try that as more of a shim rather than an actual spring. So let me 
get this bent back in here and it's just to hold the springs in when the compensator is apart generally these tabs because once the compensator is together this is going to be pushing right up against the pack of uh, spring washers in there so what I'm hoping is that I've got a shim now instead of a spring so I've got four springs and a shim instead of five springs if that makes any sense that's what I'm gonna try so let's go ahead and get this thing back together where are all the parts and pieces okay so I just got back from a bit of a ride everything's all warmed up to where it should be operating temperature put a, a few miles on it with the new spring configuration in there and I've got to say the pulses are almost entirely gone it's the smoother riding bike that I remember from last year um, what a difference it's almost butter smooth again I can feel just a little bit and that's to be expected because that spring washer is acting like a shim now and it's taking up about at least an eighth of an inch of the space in there that there was before so with an eighth of an inch less than it had the springs in there compressed a little bit more than they were before I couldn't turn the sprocket by finger but the reason I left it running and shut it off is let's say I just filled it up with gas and this would be a hot start and this is where it would really make a lot of noise before. Okay, no issues there. Let's try it again. Not the clunking around that it used to have. Okay, so there's some really quick startup shutdowns that you normally wouldn't do if you were out riding, I don't think anyway. But it seems to be good enough for me. I'll keep you updated in the comments if anything changes with the date of the update and such in the comment section. But right now this is looking very promising for, for this setup. Thank you.